Hey there, we're so grateful that you are with us for another episode of The Charging Station. Here we are on our podcast, and you can tell I've got somebody great with me today. Um, uh, Dr. Scott Rains is here. <laughs> You're looking around. I love it. Missionaries, he and his wife Carol are missionaries in Africa, so it just fits in great with the theme that we've been having going on here lately, and so we thank you for being with us. Um, you're the, the furthest away guest speaker that we've ever had, hey. and so we're grateful for that, and, and uh, we appreciate all that you do. And this is just a little bit of a bonus material from when you ministered at the church, and um, just excited to see because we want to know a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. And so I know that's that's a loaded thing right there. <laughs> I've, I've yeah. just set you up with all of that. But if you will, let's get into a little bit of the backstory. Uh, we have people that are that have a heart for missions and that want to do something maybe within their call, and it might not be um, in Africa. Right. Yeah, I, I think about that, and when I when I hear that, I'm thinking, Lord, I'll do anything that you want me to do. Just don't send me to Africa, <laughs> right? whatever you do. And so here you uh, are. Yeah. You're that guy that <laughs> yeah. God did send there. But a lot happened before that. Sure, absolutely. And so what can you share with us a little bit about your story? Well, it started 25 years ago as far as missions goes. Okay. Um, we, uh, Carol and I, had gone to uh, Pentecostal Theological Seminary at the time as Church of God Theological Seminary. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was there to, uh, to get my master's. And uh, from that experience, I, I met uh, Jose Borges, who was the overseer of Portugal, and uh, through a relationship that developed, he asked us to come and help Portugal. And uh, we had agreed to do that. And then in 1997, we were appointed by Church of God World Missions uh, as career missionaries. And uh, so then that's when everything started. We sold everything we owned and, and packed up uh, the two children that we had and, uh, wow. and moved to Portugal, Lisbon, Portugal. Wow. And, now stop right there, if you yeah. will. Say the name of the person that you came in contact with. His name was Jose Borges. Oh, I give you a round of applause on that one. So that is a good way of doing that. So um, with that, so you loaded everything up. You went to Portugal. Yeah, had to be a whole new experience. Absolutely, it was a uh, you know, culture shock. Yeah, you know, you learn about it in school, uh, but it's a real thing. And you come in, and you know, we come in very, very idealistic at first. And then you realize, especially a country like Portugal, that is predominantly Catholic, about 97%. Uh, and you're trying to minister, you know, you've done all the preparation and training and everything to, to go there and do the ministry. And you come face to face with a culture that's resistant to the gospel. Yeah. And uh, you find out very quickly, it doesn't depend on you or it doesn't depend on your education. What it depends on is the Holy Spirit working through you to be able to accomplish anything when it comes to the mission field. I'm sure just like me as a pastor and different ministers, you know, you have this dream of what things are going to be like, mm -hmm. you know, when you preach a sermon and the altars are full and nobody's yeah. left in the seat and everybody surrenders their life to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And is that what you experienced when you went there? Absolutely. And it was almost immediate. And uh, there's something I used to do uh, every day. I would get up uh, before the sun came up and I would take prayer walks. And uh, one day I was out, uh, doing that prayer walk, crying out to the Lord, Lord, you sent me here. And uh, it's like picking at the rocks. It's so difficult yeah. uh, for anybody to come into a Protestant church. It takes pretty much crisis in their life, you know, and, and I know that God's power is much greater than that. And I just began to cry out to the Lord, Lord, you know, how, how do I reach these people and how do I uh, get to a place where I can tap into that power to do that? Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly, and he said these three things. He said, uh, hear my voice, seek my face, be holy. I've called you to walk with me. And this is something that changed my life, that it really doesn't depend on programs or uh, ideas or concepts or, or whatever you want to create. What it depends on is that personal walk with God. Wow. If you have that personal walk with God, then God's going to work through you to accomplish what he wants to do wherever he sent you. Can you give us those three things again? Yeah, is hear my voice, seek my face, be holy. I've called you to walk with me. That's something that you mentioned 1997. Here we are all these years later, and you're still holding true to that 25 years. Yes. And um, that has sustained you, I'm sure, not just in Portugal, but right. everywhere that you've gone. Everywhere that I've gone. I've, I've, we face the same thing. You know, it, in the United States, we're so fortunate to have a church on every corner and it's on the TV, it's on the radio, it's everywhere you go. But the world is not that way. And uh, 
they're crying out for something. And even our ministers around the world, what we found very quickly is that uh, in doing our ministry, that they, they've cried out for training. And uh, it's like when, when uh, we left Portugal, we were asked to be the youth director of Europe. And uh, when we went there, one of the first things that I did was put, uh, put together a youth board. And at the time, there was only one national youth director for uh, Europe at the time. Uh, but we identified key youth leaders around Europe, and we brought them into uh, where we were at at ETS, European Theological Seminary, uh, where we were based out of. And uh, we had our very first meeting, and, and I asked this question. I said, uh, tell me five things that, uh, that I can do to help you accomplish your ministry. Oh, wow. And uh, without hesitation, every single person at the table said the same thing. We need training. We yeah. need to be trained. And we're talking about modern Europe. We're not talking about, you know, Africa or South America. We're talking about modern Europe. We need to be trained in what we're trying to do, particularly in this case, youth work and children's ministry. And he said, they said, everything else just pales in comparison. So we, do, we learned very quickly that, that training and education was key for me as an expatriate missionary to go and to make a difference. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I feel that there's a shift. I don't know when that's taking place. But that is something that seems to be happening in the United States because for so long we took advantage mm -hmm. of the fact that we were the ones that were sending out missionaries. Right. And in some ways, I feel like Jennifer, uh, God has placed Jennifer and I to be here as missionaries. Exactly. But that is where I, I guess I, I, I pulled up some, some footage from uh, a few years ago. But uh, here is hey. two, two young lovebirds <laughs> right here. And um, this was in Germany. Yes, that's right. So it's after you left, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So what was the role and what did you do there? In Germany, we were the youth directors for Europe. And uh, we, we were based out of uh, Canibus, uh, where our, our, uh, prim our premier school uh, for uh, all of Europe is. And all of, anybody coming in to be trained for ministry for Church of God would come to ETS. Uh, but we based out of there because it was, a, it was a dual purpose. One was that we could also teach there. And we would teach uh, youth ministry and children's ministry because the work we did in Portugal was children's ministry. Yeah. Um, and then the second part is we could use the students in the school to uh, to help us in doing the youth work around all around Europe. And uh, okay. so that we had student uh, workers and we had uh, we involved them in everything we did. We started the first uh, Winterfest, which yeah. we called Eurofest there in 2005. And, uh, and so it was just a great combination to be in that location. Well, that is when our paths crossed and we were introduced yeah. <laughs> to this, this power couple and what God was doing. And again, I see that there was strategy involved in everything that God was doing because you're not only reaching, like you said, it is Europe yeah. and you can reach a lot of people in a multiplied capacity mm -hmm. and um, reaching nations. I, I pulled mm -hmm. up another one that is difficult to see. Uh, but I believe this was, was that Belgium? That's Belgium. That we were right. in? That's right. And um, so that's just a, another example of just exactly what happened with that. So, yeah. so then after you were in Germany for a while, you took a, a leap and, and, and went somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, I was asked by the field director of Asia Pacific uh, to come and to take a, the Asian Seminary Christian Ministries, ASCM, uh, to be the president of the school there. And so at first I said, no. Uh, <laughs> and then he says, well, why don't you come and see it? I said, okay, I'll come and see it. Cause Hey, I mean, I, uh, the work we were doing in Europe was just wonderful. Being the youth director for Europe, we traveled everywhere. Uh, we took our kids with us. We homeschooled them as we went along the way. So they were part of everything that we did, which was just wonderful. We, we really enjoyed what we were doing. Um, but the Lord had different plans for us. So I went and when I got there, I knew that this was God's uh, purpose, God's uh, plan for us. And so I came back and said, yes, well, that we'll, we'll do that. So we, uh, this time we, uh, sold everything we had there. And again, and, that, that, if I'm counting, <laughs> that's number two. Uh, that's yeah. So that'll be, uh, once in the U S we sold everything twice in Portugal, we sold everything and went to, to Germany and we sold everything in Germany. Then just went with luggage, uh, to, uh, the Philippines. Wow. And, uh, and then we started that work there, which was a, which was a wonderful, beautiful work. And, and, uh, this is again, you, you uh, came there again after you came uh, uh, and worked with us there yeah. doing training. Yep, exactly uh, in, what you were talking Europe. about. Exactly right. And that's, that was why it was so uh, important. You know, you can do, when you, as a missionary, you can receive a lot of people. You can see, really receive uh, individuals. You can receive teams, people that are wanting to come and to, and to make a difference. And I, and I believe in that 1,000%. One, 1, um, but many times it's more for the benefit of the person coming to, to experience that the world is... Truly, two-thirds of the world is, lives in poverty, 
and uh, and they you know they need to see that what they have in America is is something that's that they're privileged with, uh, but they're coming to give and so on to in order to uh, you know to to make a difference. But what I did found that uh, with the training that you came and did, it was it was for the first time I saw that there was a huge huge benefit to the works, the ministries that were going on in the country. Mm -hmm. And I, and I believed in it so much that I begged when I w left uh, Germany and I went to, to the Philippines, uh, I begged you and Tony Lane, please come, please come and do this training yeah. with us in the Philippines yeah. and uh, through the school there. And uh, it took a couple of years, but you finally, you finally, well, did. you know, it's amazing what we saw because um, we didn't anticipate there being uh, more than one trip to Germany. Yeah. And then that turned into three yep. and you left us. And so we had to continue with that until you talked us yep. into coming to the Philippines. And then that has turned into something that can still continues today. Mm -hmm. But I, I see once again that God has positioned you for multiplication. He's positioned you at the premier school for Asia. That's right. If I could say it that way during it that was. time. Yes, it absolutely was. We, that, we were the premier school for all of Asia, all all the training that came through as, as far as accredited education, both on the undergraduate uh, bachelor level and the, the master level and the doctorate level. And, and if I can just inject this right here, I, I know, I believe that every follower of Jesus Christ should take an overseas or out of context mm -hmm. mission trip mm -hmm. somewhere at some time within their life yes. to give them a greater perspective of what they have back home. Absolutely. However, that is nothing compared to what it's like to sell everything that you have. Mm. And some of you are getting nervous right here. You're yeah. listening to this and you're getting nervous and you're thinking, oh, Lord, whatever you do, don't, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. <laughs> yeah. Just don't make me sell everything and go to Africa. That's We're right. going to get to Africa in just a minute. But I did pull up one photo oh. I want to show you here. Oh. Oh. Um, there is uh, uh, Wide-Eyed Scott. And I just want to comment on the fact that this was a multicultural experience in the Philippines because if memory serves me correctly, we were about at 21 different nations at one time mm -hmm. that uh, ASM was ministering to. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it, every year we, we were getting uh, students from all over Asia coming in, and uh, it, it was one of the most diverse places I've ever been. And if I remember this right, I, I'm just, just looking at that large plate of food there. <laughs> I, is, I guess that's non and maybe some curry, maybe goat curry or something like that. I think uh, you're right. Because George... Oh, George. Yeah. George made George, a student George, or a former college, student was there. So, yeah. yep. And so, and here was one of the years oh. that we went with, uh, with a great team of people and, um, there's Javaris Wright and, uh, near to South Georgia and just different ones. So we, we had a wonderful time and a wonderful experience there. So if you can, we're going to fast forward from there and, um, what happened, um, in between being in the Philippines and then also, um, we know that you land in Africa. Yeah. Well, out of the Philippines, uh, we uh, spent some time uh, doing uh, training. We, I would travel uh, to different locations, really anywhere in the world, either you know, mostly Asia and some in South America. But to wherever the need was, uh, we, we spent time just going and, and doing training. We did Japan. We did so many places that we were able to go. And again, like I said, uh, the training is, a, is an important aspect for if people are coming from another country to, to, uh, to, to make a difference in, a, in, a, in the mission field. That, uh, that the training is such, such an important part. So we believe in that. We were doing that. And then um, in uh, January 2020, I got a phone call, and, and they asked me to take the school uh, in, in Zambia. Uh, yeah. And the, the neat thing about that school is that, uh, well, I can tell you the whole story about how that came about. Do you want, should I go into that? Or? Let's, let's, um, let's save some of that. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Because I want to ask you to come back for another episode. Oh, okay. And I want to spend a lot of time talking about what God is doing mm. in Africa. Mm. Right now, again, I see um, firsthand what has happened because here you are on yet a third continent outside of North America. And again, God is strict of Africa. Peter Thomas and the education coordinator, Jurgen Rudolph, uh, had been uh, working many, many years uh, to develop the education system in Africa. And they had done many great things. And uh, one of the things that they were lacking, though, was a, an accredited school yeah. uh, and maybe a central school, a premier school like Asia had, like Europe had, like South America has. Uh, and Africa was missing that. They had a lot of Bible schools, which, which are great and very necessary. Uh, but 
there, every continent needs a premier school that is the, the, the primary place where our leaders and, and our future pastors come to get that uh, accredited education. Because if they don't get it with us in a Pentecostal system, they're going to get it someplace else. Yeah. And typically it's not going to be in a Pentecostal uh, if, education. If they get it at all. If they get and it at all. It, exactly. I'm sure there's statistics to show that those who are trained and prepared uh, are, are, are largely successful yes. in what God does within the local church. Oh, uh, by far. It's like, and when, when uh, P- Peter and uh, Jurgen came, uh, because they could not find uh, any connection to get accreditation, because there was no African government that would uh, give them accreditation. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they tried to connect with other outside schools, and then they contacted me there in the Philippines, and, uh, and we checked into it, and sure enough, we were able to do a what they call a satellite program uh, through the Asia Theological Association, ATA, and uh, to be an accredited master's degree. And the master's degree, when you're doing it by extension, uh, is a great place to start because uh, it's two-year program versus a four-year degree. A four-year degree takes so long yeah. uh, when you're doing it by extension, much more than four I, years. I remembered hearing about that when we were there and about what God was was doing through all that. And, mm-hmm. and here we are again. This is the group that assembled, and it's amazing how that God puts people on your team and, yes. and, and, and is there. You know, it's good to hear all the backstory. It's good to hear all of that. Um, but let's just, let's, just, let's just be real. Throughout all of that, you had to have encountered struggles along the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, because there's this ideal that here I am, I'm reaching the nations, and all of this is going on, and, and it had to be difficult at times. Yeah, I think the greatest difficulties, uh, you know, when it comes to doing mission work is more the struggles you have with your family. Uh, and the difficulties of living in a foreign culture or living away from your own family in the ministry, you know, everything you do, you're, you know, you're taking steps as you're, as they're ordered of God. And uh, so you have struggles in ministry and we all do, you do, everybody does. So you can expect that and you can work through those because you have, you know, you know, God to help you through those things. I think the struggles though, if you could say uh, you're going to struggle on the, on the mission field, it has to come with the, with the difficulties that you have with, you know, raising children overseas being away from the grandparents, being away from family, uh, doing the traveling and expenses, everything that's involved in that. So um, th- those were the most, but it's nothing that, uh, that you know, if you're careful, and my wife, uh, Carol, did a fabulous job uh, protecting our children from some of the pitfalls of missionary children, which yeah. is becoming bitter. Uh, and she did a great job with that. And I'm, I'm thankful to say that both our children, Ryan and Stephanie, uh, serve the Lord, love the Lord, uh, my son is doing missionary work, uh, you know, already. That's, that's a, that's and my daughter sign. is, um, she became, she's got her master's in teaching and she's uh, became a science teacher and now she's becoming a nurse. <laughs> oh, wow. All of which is great for the mission field or wherever sure. God sends her. I can recall one memory that I had. Uh, the two of you invited us to your apartment in, um, in the Philippines and uh, we just had a time. I had a great meal and all of that. And um, we just started praying. And I remember that it was a transition because one of the children were graduating or going to college or doing something. And I can remember the, the Holy Spirit just began to move in and speak because there was, I could feel the hurt mm. that was coming before it happened. Sure. It's one thing for, to send a, a kid to school, uh, any, send any kid to any school right now, but particularly uh, a few hours away across the state of Georgia to Valdosta or seven, eight hours away to Cleveland. But for them to be going all the way across the world, mm-hmm. that is great sacrifice. It was. And, you know, I remember very distinctly taking my son Ryan and, and dropping him off at Lee University and uh, getting on a plane and going to Portugal, yeah. I'm sorry, to the Philippines. And uh, with, with our daughter who had, wasn't in college yet. And so he was there left alone. Uh, but, you know, thankfully, the Church of God is still family, and we have yeah. so many people that yeah. watched over him, took care of him, uh, and the Lord certainly uh, was with him. And, uh, you know, the greatest thing that I can say is that, that my son loves the Lord and serves him. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. And over the next last few minutes that we have together within this episode, um, you know, I, I, I see the sacrifices, and if we can just shift it, because you're, you're in a global perspective, so to speak with great distances away and all of that. But the, the, the people that are listening, some of them are called to that. 
but they're called to a different mission field, as we all are. Uh, a mission field that's in this community and wherever it is. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Because it's the same. There, there's going to be sacrifices. There's going to be struggles, mm -hmm. but there's going to be rewards if we remain faithful. Yes. And I think that's part of what you're experiencing in your ministry. Oh, absolutely. And uh, mission work is uh, doesn't is not just overseas. Uh, we know that uh, when uh, God sent uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses at the day of Pentecost, that it, it, he was sending them out to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. I'm on the uttermost parts of the earth, but there's still a Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. There's a city, there's a state, there's a country that has to be reached as well. So we all work that together. And even, you know, in a local church, you're reaching out to the community yeah. here, so on. There's always struggles, but God works them through. God makes the way. He opens the doors. He's the one that makes it happen, and it's for his glory. He does, and this is a word for you specifically. Because God's tugging at our church, that's exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. We sense him pulling us into a time of intimacy because he's releasing us yeah. to do the work that needs to be done beyond the four walls of this building. That's right. So grateful that you have been with us. Tell us, I got a couple of things as we finish up uh, with this episode. Uh, you did something in preparation for all of this. What did you do before the call to ministry took place in your life? Uh, to as preparation for ministry, I... Um, uh, no, 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 before... Before any of that, okay. What did you do before? Oh well, uh, when, after I got out of high school, I went to the U.S. Navy for six years. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on that one. So, uh, so you and what I'm getting at with that is, and you've done construction work. And like I was an um, electrician in the Navy and did construction construction work. Uh, I also, uh, when I got out and went to went to uh, uh, Oral Roberts University to get my evangelism degree because that's what, what I felt my calling was in because God called me while I was in the Navy. Uh, I went uh, there. I got hired uh, by the school to do computers. So I actually had an 11-year career after uh, I got out of the Navy as a comp uh, doing computers before we ever went uh, to the seminary and went to the mission field. And that's what I want you to know. What God has already used in your past, what he has put, you, put before you, mm -hmm is exactly what he's doing to prepare you for what, how he wants to use you on the mission field, wherever that may be and whatever that might look like. So don't think that what you've gone through that you're not qualified for. Oh, God will take yeah. care of you. He will use you. And there's a great harvest that needs to be reached right. for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. And we hope to see you next time.